He is still the Lord. He has never changed. His power remains the same always. In Jesus' name we pray. This night is a night of power. And when we say in Jesus' name we pray, your amen must be very powerful. I say in Jesus' name we pray. Listen to the word of God. Behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. This night a new thing. Ask the Lord do a new thing in my life this night. Tell the Lord. The Lord says, he has promises. I will do a new thing. If you will not do it, you will not promise. He has decided to do a new thing. This night, new thing. Oh Lord, that new thing that you have promised, do it in my life. Do it in my family. Do it in my ministry. Do it in my business. New thing, new thing, new thing that you have promised. I don't know that new thing, but the Lord says he will do a new thing. Something new in your life. Something your family members have never seen before. Something the people, your neighbors have never seen before. Something that the people that knew you, even in your place of work, they have never seen new thing. Oh Lord, do it. Oh Lord, do it. Oh Lord, do it. Pray, 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 pray. The Lord will surely do it. Pray. Ask the Lord, do that new thing in my life. This night is my night, O oh Lord. This night is my night, O oh Lord. Do a new thing in my life. Do that new thing you have promised in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be broken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Ah, the anointing is here tonight. The prophet of God, the apostle of God, is going to break every yoke tonight. Pray, tell the Lord, I will not go with my own yoke. I will not go with my own yoke. No yoke will follow me back home. Every yoke, from spiritual realm to physical realm, I cancel them this night, as the man of God comes up, the yoke will be broken. Hallelujah. The yoke will be broken. Half of that assurance, the yoke will be broken. Yes, this night is your night. You are not going back with any yoke. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you very much. We bless you. Because this night is the night you have planned ahead. And you are going to move and touch every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be an explosion of your power in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. Glory be to your holy name. Jesus' name we pray. A loud amen. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this night of power. We thank you because we all are going to experience your power tonight in Jesus' name. Father, as we sing by worshiping and praising your holy name, we pray our praises will be acceptable in thy sight in Jesus' name. Bless us as we continue, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Glory be.
Glory to God in the highest, amen. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the highest, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, Amen, for his mercies endure it forever. Amen. Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Shout hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Everybody shout hallelujah. Shout Alleluia for his mercies. Shout for salvation, for holiness. Shout for his power. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Red and shout hallelujah. Praise 
Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of repentance. Why you delay? Tomorrow may be late. Why you delay? Tomorrow may be late. If you delay, tomorrow may be late. There is danger if you delay. Glory, hallelujah. Why you delay? Tomorrow may be late. Why you delay? Tomorrow may be late. If you delay, tomorrow may be late. There is danger. Moving the mountain, Lord Jesus. Moving the mountain in your name. Moving the mountain, Lord Jesus, we are moving the mountain in your name. We are moving the mountain, Lord Jesus, we are moving the mountain in your name. I am moving the mountain, Lord Jesus, I am moving the mountain in your name. Moving the mountain, Lord Jesus. Moving the mountain in your name. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. I say power belongs to Jesus. Power, power belongs to Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our dear Father, we are grateful for your goodness. Thank you for what you have for us tonight. Thank you for your power that is going to be in demonstration. Thank you for the mighty signs you are going to wrought in the midst of your people. Our hearts are filled with gratitude, with great expectations. I ask you to receive thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at your word now, I ask you to speak to us. You give us an open heart to take your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. This period we are in now is called Evangelism Training Period. And um, I want every one of us to pay attention because it's part of the power night and the revival time. Uh, in First Corinthians chapter 9, I read from verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, 
that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I may gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak, and made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Praise the Lord. This evening, we are talking on the subject, reviving the old time commitment to soul winning. I want, to, I want you to re-echo it to me. Reviving the old time commitment to soul winning. The passage I've just read to you now talks about one of the greatest apostles, Paul the Apostle. Actually, you will see that it's a clear testimony of his commitment and consecration to soul winning. He declared it open to all that this is his commitment to the gospel to soul winning. The statement was not just mere pronouncement. He followed it up with commitment, with actions. He didn't just say it. All throughout his lifetime, he made every effort, despite difficulties, challenges, troubles, most of the time in danger, at risk, in the city, in the wilderness, anywhere, he made every effort to ensure that this declaration, this commitment, was just not a mere word. It must be carried out. In fact, if you look at the passage in verse 16, he made this commitment, putting a curse upon himself. He says, if I preach not the gospel, woe is unto me. For he to put that word war is even putting a curse. Should in case he fails, should in case he abandons that, that there will be a repercussion against him. So this is an example for us. It may not be an overstatement that it is not Paul the apostle that has made this kind of commitment. Some of us here, by God's grace, at the early stage of our Christian life, when we got born again, when the passion, the fire, the commitment was in our lives, we made a strong commitment on our knees with tears unto God. And we prayed. And we promised the Lord we will proclaim, we will preach the gospel, we will win souls. We even went as far as Paul the Apostle did, putting a curse upon our lives that if I preach not the gospel, woe is unto me. So, but as time goes on with challenges of life, with troubles of life, which Paul the Apostle too had, the temptations, the difficulties, which other people in the Bible days had, which we still have today. Some of us, as relapsed, we have forgotten the commitment, we have forgotten the consecration, we have got forgotten the vows we made on our knees with tears before the Lord. And we have even forgotten that we did it with a curse upon ourselves. And uh, probably some of the things we experience today 
might be as a result of what we have said before, which we are not fulfilling today. But God is a God of mercy. He's a God of compassion. And uh, from time to time, he reminds his people, his children, I remember what you told me some years ago. Remember your consecration some years ago. Remember your commitment some years ago. Remember the curse you placed upon yourself concerning so winning some years ago. That's why we are now coming back to think as individuals and as a church to look at what we have said, the commitment, and see where we are. Are we really carrying out all that we have vowed, all we have said unto the Lord? And there is the necessity of bringing a revival to that commitment. That's why the topic is reviving the old time commitment, old time. You made it some years ago. And um, as, uh, like Paul the Apostle, we are supposed to fulfill that commitment. We'll take an example of revival. Revival, most of the time, we take it to be only prayer. But actually, revival breaks out through evangelism, preaching the gospel, winning souls, because Paul the Apostle says it is in this is the power of God in demonstration. Our prayer should be like Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3. I read in verse, um, verse 1 and 2, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Sheganath, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work. That's the work of soul winning, the work of evangelism, the work of proclaiming the gospel. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. That is probably God is even not happy with us because we are no more fulfilling our cons commitment and consecration. That's why he said, God in wrath, in anger, in your unhappiness with us, remember mercy and revive us. And that should be our prayers. We have three points quickly to look at. Point number one is the sacred commitment by heaven-bound saints. That's point number one. Point number two is setbacks to our old-time commitment to soul winning. Setback, barriers, hindrances that to our old-time commitment to soul winning. And point number three is supplication and earnest commitment for the revival of soul winning. Point number one, sacred commitment to, by heaven-bound saints. The passage I read to you in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, we see um, that Paul the Apostle was one of the saints of the Lord. Normally, children of God at one time or the other must make a commitment, must make a vow. The reason why we make vows to God is as a result of his mercy we have received, the salvation we have received. And because of the goodness of the Lord, the mercy of God, the help of God, we make commitment, Lord, if you have done this for me, if you have saved me, if you have given me a peace, given me hope of heaven, given me joy of salvation, I too will transfer, do something to ensure that others are beneficiaries of this experience I have. That's the commitment. Every heaven-bound believer does that. And one of these 
uh, commitments we make or vows we make is the vow of preaching the gospel. And that's the mandate the Lord Jesus Christ gave to us before he left. In Mark chapter 16, I read in verse, um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the mandate, and that's the commitment we made to the Lord. And Paul the Apostle laid an example for us. Why we need to follow his example is because he said in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 16, 1 Timothy chapter 1, I read in verse 16, he says, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul the Apostle was a pattern, and we are following the example he has left because Christ made him to be a pattern for us. And so, uh, when we make commitment, consecration, vow, it has a lot of implications, and we ought to know that vows are sacred, they are, it is irreversible, it's unchangeable. And from the account of Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it is a necessary obligation that you have to carry out. It's a necessity, a necessary obligation. That's one thing we ought to know. Number two, it is, an irrevoc it is irrevocable, though there might be adverse circumstances we may face in the process of fulfilling the commitment. It is irrevocable, you can't change it. Three, it must not be disobeyed. Like Paul the Apostle says, whereupon King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to a heavenly vision. Number four, uh, God regards anyone who differed or changes from his commitment as a fool. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says it is, it is folly for somebody to make a vow, a commitment, and turn back. Number five, God expects the performance that when we say something, we should do it. When we make a vow, we should do it. Number six, there is no escape, escape route to commitment, to, uh, to commitment and vows. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 25, the Bible says it is a snare for somebody to make a vow, and after making a vow, he's now making an inquiry. Should I drop this thing? Should I stop it? So there is no escape route. And number seven, it brings a curse if it is unfulfilled. Second uh, point number two now, we talk about setbacks to our old time commitment to soul winning. There are setbacks we encounter after making commitments to the Lord. We are not the only one that has had some setbacks, challenges, trials, difficulties in the process of carrying out vows, commitments. In the olden time, it has been there. During the time of the apostle, it has been there. Some of these setbacks, because of time, let me read in First Thessalonians, chapter 2 and in verse 18 it says wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but satan did what hindered us hindered us so we see satan is one of the people that causes 
So satanic hindrances is one of the setbacks. Number two is loss of false love for Christ and for soul. The, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, Christ told the church in Ephesus, he says, nevertheless, you have left your first love. First love for Christ, first love for souls, first love for soul winning. He says, that's one of the setbacks. Once that love is gone, then the ability to carry it out becomes uh, 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 impossible. Number three is lukewarmness. The church in Laodicea, they are neither cold nor hot. They, they are today up, another day down. Lukewarmness. Then number four is the deception of riches. The church in uh, Laodicea also, Revelation chapter 3 verse 17, they said, we are rich, we are increased in goods, we don't have need of any other thing. God has blessed us. What else are we talking about? They equated the riches of God as the fulfillment of their vows and commitment, so they don't need any other thing. Then another setback is wrong expectations. There are times we make commitments where what we expect to happen does not necessarily happen exactly that way. Another thing happens the other way. And like um, Jephthah, when Jephthah made a commitment, Lord, if you deliver me, if you get me out of this, I will do this. By the time he came back, he wasn't expecting the first daughter to be the one to meet him. He was expecting an animal. And then he said, you have put me low. Wrong expectations. Uh, and then number six is loss of compassion. Number seven, loss of vision. And then indifference about the imminent coming of Christ. That's the setback. Now we we'll go to point number three before we round up. is the supplication and earnest commitment for revival of souls. I've read to you Habakkuk chapter um, uh, three, uh, chapter three, verse two. But let's read Psalm 85, and I read verse four. Psalm 85, and in verse four, blessed are they. Sorry, uh, turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger to toward us to cease. The anger for failing to fulfill our commitment. He said, let's turn it away from us. Will thou, not, will thou be angry with us forever? Of course not, if the people repent. Will thou draw out thine anger to all generation? Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? The revival of evangelism. There's nothing that brings joy than soul winning. Anytime you go out and preach the gospel and comes back with your shield with you, your sheep with you, you're always happy that you won a soul. So that's the joy we are praying that you should return back. Now, as we look at this, we see that for the, such a revival to come back, we are going to pray like the Habakkuk, like the Psalmist. But apart from prayer, there are other things we need to do which are practical, which we should know. One is we should remember where we are fallen. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, we should remember where we are fallen. Number two, we should repent of the past failures. Revelation chapter 2 is still in verse 5. Then we restore or return the false commitment restore or return the false commitment. Then number three and four is renewal of the original zeal, the zeal of thy house, the zeal of evangelism had eaten me up. And then number five, readiness to preach the gospel to lost soul. Paul the apostle said, as much as it's in me, I am ready to preach the gospel unto you also. And then number six, 
recover your compassion and passion for souls, and then finally resist the devil. Whenever he wants to discourage you, hinder you, not allow him to go out, resist the devil, and what the scripture tells us, that the devil will do what? Will flee from us. Revival is coming back. But you have a part to play. Revival is not only having night vigils, it's not only praying. Revival comes when the people of God are preaching the gospel. Signs and wonders follow us. While we're winning souls, many souls are coming. Joy of salvation is flowing. And then mighty signs are being done as we do the Let's rise up and go to the Lord in prayers and make a commitment this day. Lord, this a uh, commitment I made some years ago, I'm going to return back to it. Those consecrations I made some years ago, I am going to return back to it. Open your mouth, talk to the Lord, and the Lord will help you. You he will hear your prayer. Even if you pray short prayer here, you go home and review everything and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. And dear Father, we are grateful because you are reminding us of the commitments we made some years ago, and you want us to return it back. I pray that we will be sincere and truthful people that will do according to your word. And as we do, your signs and wonders will follow us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We will praise the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. As you know before, that tonight is a special night, the night of power. And the power of God is going to touch you where you are there. God is going to move in the midst of his people in a special way. And I want to congratulate you because you are not going to go with your mountains here in the mighty name of Jesus. Commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. Pray, tell the Lord, I will not go with my own mountain. I will not go with my own mountain. Pray, 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 pray. Tell the Lord, whatever the mountain may be, however long that mountain has been, God is going to use the bulldozer of the prayer of an apostle to move it tonight. You are not going back with that mountain. You are a special person as from tonight. You are a different person as of tonight. The Lord is going to visit you in a special way as from tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not remain the same anymore. Pray, tell the Lord, Lord, I am here. No mountain will follow me. No mountain will follow me back home tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I am here before you. Manifest your power and your glory in my life this very night. And the Lord is going to do it. Pray, 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 tell the Lord, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. All those mountains that have been there for a long time, bring them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. The Lord will surely do it for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. It is time to give our tax, tithes, and offering. And we want to read from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and I read from verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Raise your tithes and offering up now as we present it to the Lord. Almighty Father, we thank you very much and we bless your holy name because we have brought this look to talking to come and appreciate you. Father, I pray you bless every hand raised up right now in Jesus' name. We are praying, Heavenly Father, that you use this very for your own glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. A louder amen. Our ushers are very close to you. Please make sure you drop your tithes and offering in the bag that have been passed across to you.
and let's remain in the mood of prayers. If you have given your ties, you are free to sit down. Make sure you, the bag that has been passed around did not pass you by. Drop your tithes and offering there to honor the Lord. Still have many of our brethren up there. Please let's uh, collect from them. The Lord bless you as we are giving to the Lord abundantly. Give to the Lord and the Lord will give abundantly to you. Let's be fast about it. This night is a night of action, night of power. The Lord is ready for you. The Lord is ready for me. The Lord has promised he's going to do a new thing in our midst. And that new thing will not pass you by. I say it will not pass you by. Just drop your tithes and offering because we are in for great miracle this night. I am in for great miracle this night. The Lord is going to perform wonders in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We actually appreciate all our invitees that have come today, our brethren, our neighbors that we have invited. We recognize your presence here today and uh, we, bid, uh, we bid you welcome into our midst and we say you should continue to come with us in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, as you listen to our weekly meeting, uh, make sure our ushers are very close to you there. They will give you a small sleep. Please uh, recognize, uh, identify that you are with them, and then they will give you that small sleep. As you feel it, you return the sleep to them, and that will help us to continue to pray for you. Please. Do that, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's listen to our weekly announcement. On Thursday like this, we always gather together for our revival and evangelistic training service. Well, tonight is a special night for all of us, and the Lord is going to touch us in a special way in Jesus' name. I want you to know very well that every third Thursday like this of the month, we always gather together for our special power night. And tonight... The Lord, the power of God will touch you where you are in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, on Sundays is always the time we meet together for our devotional service. And the Lord has been moving in a special way in our midst. We always start by 8 a.m. with our search distributors. It is always a wonderful time that you will not want to miss. The Lord bless you as we will be together this coming Sunday in Jesus' name. But this coming Sunday is a special Sunday for group two. Amen? The Lord is going to do something special for us as we that are in group two are going to meet together here. Please make sure you are here on time because God will move, God wants to move in our midst in a special way. In fact, I want to say it is going to be an extension of tonight's power night. Amen. And the Lord will move in a special way on Sunday in our midst. Group 1 will still remain in their district. But as this is the last Sunday of the month, we are coming with the Lord and we are going to receive abundantly from him. Make sure you are here on time and the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. And uh, on Monday, we are always together for the systematic study of the word of God. Right now, we are studying from the book of Mark. Come with us for a life-changing message of God on Mondays. And as you come, the Lord will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to tell you, this night is a special night. You are going to be blessed. Say, I am going to be blessed. I am going to be blessed. You are going to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Because as the man of God will be coming, he will be coming with the power of God. And I'm going to tell you something, that the apostolic message will be coming with the power of God. And that message will be coming with a lot of prophetic utterances. Amen. And uh, you know what you are going to do? You will say a bigger amen as the entrances are coming prophetically to cast your own. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And as you say a bigger amen, don't allow the amen of the man beside you to overcome your own. You will cash it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because tonight is tonight. Tonight is tonight. I want to tell you something. The kingdom of darkness are in, they are just getting afraid and they are just shivering and they don't know what to do now. There's confusion already in the kingdom of darkness. Because tonight, your mountain will move. I say your mountain will move. Listen very well. If you have been violent for a very long time, the man of God is going to pray tonight. Yeah. And I want to assure you, by this time next year, you will come and line up with your children. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I still want to tell you something. When an apostle is praying, heaven always responds immediately. No matter how long, your sickness, your disease, your mountain, whatever you have brought here tonight, tonight is tonight. The Lord will take them away in Jesus' name. Above all, God is going to bless you. He will bless you more and more. He will bless your family. He will bless your children. He will bless your ministry. He will bless your business. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am telling you, by the time we finish this very meeting, you are no more the same in the name of Jesus. Because you will check everywhere. You will discover every sickness has gone. Every disease has gone. As the man of God comes out, even when you see him, make sure you see him. Miracle. I say when you see him, miracle. I say when you see him, miracle. Whether you see him directly or in the tree, miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, you know what you are doing? You are facing the power of God face to face. And when the power of God comes face to face, you know what happens? Every power will be swallowed up. All those powers that have been troubling your life, immediately the man of God said, let us pray, they will depart. I said they will depart. They will depart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just prepare yourself. I am going to get something tonight. Uh, prepare yourself very well. I'm going to get something tonight. And whatever the word says to you, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Already our pastor has told you here that today, today is your day. Miracle, power, anointing, every yoke broken in your life in Jesus' name. And for all the people who are joining us over the internet, streaming, in every location, anywhere you are, you should position yourself as if you are the only one I am talking to. Whatever the mountain, whatever the sickness, and whatever the infirmity, long-standing problem, tonight you are free in Jesus' name. And for everyone here, all your tears are wiped away. All your yokes are broken. And if you are there, you are concerned for somebody. That person you are concerned for, whether the person is here or not, you are standing for them. Their mountains will move away. 
every evil power will be destroyed in their lives in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand for your blessing. Father, we thank you tonight. I bless your name for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, everyone here. I thank you for all our invitees. I thank you for those who have brought great, great problems before you. Tonight, touch their lives. Tonight, move their mountains away. Tonight, break every yoke. And let there be miracle for everyone in Jesus' name. Let there be confirmation in every life tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are blessed already. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. That sentence coming from the Lord Jesus Christ is a principle that God himself always acts on. Anyone who comes before him, no matter your background, no matter your problem, no matter your tears, no matter even your sin in the past, and no matter your failure in the past, as you come in the presence of the Lord, and you come with faith, and with expectation, you will not be disappointed. It's a God of love. It's a God of mercy. And it's a God of power. And because of his love and mercy, he bases every blessing he gives you on the, on the fact that you come, you believe, and what you are believing for will be done. According to your faith, be it done unto thee. Look at Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. It says in verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, and remember Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Jesus were to talk to you directly, physically tonight, this is what he will tell you. Remember again, no matter who you are, and no matter where you are coming from, and no matter the challenges you have in your life, if Jesus were to talk to you personally, physically, one-to-one, -one, this is what he will tell you. Verse 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him, that believers. That's what the Lord is telling you tonight. Your problems will soon vanish away. Your mountain will still soon move. And all those challenges of your life that you have been wondering, how will this be done? How will that be done? Tonight is the night it will be done. He says, if you can only believe, believe all things are possible, to him that believes, I believe God tonight. In your life, all things are possible. In your family, all things are possible. Every challenge of your life, all things are possible. He will put laughter in your mouth. Joy in your heart. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. What load are you carrying? What pain are you having? What sickness do you have in your life? Tonight, God has come to you personally. And he has come to make all things possible in your life. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me. Be it unto me. 
be it unto me according to thy word. And it's unto you tonight according to the word you are hearing in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, before we pray, I want to talk to you on the great possibilities of faith in Christ. The great possibilities of faith in Christ. Once you put your faith in Christ, there are great possibilities. That moment, that time, you put that faith in Christ, you'll see all those mountains moving away. All the walls of partition and the walls of disturbance in your life, everything crumbling. You will see Satan fleeing away from your life. And every sickness you will see will just be dissolving and going away. The moment you put your faith in Christ, the great possibilities of faith in Christ. There are three things we're talking about tonight. Number one, asking. Asking. You will ask. Note this, everything you ask the Lord tonight is done. Yeah. Number two, appropriating. Appropriating. That means after you ask, then you stretch out your hand. What you claim, you are going to have. Because you can appropriate. Number three, acting. Acting. You will not just, you know, if you are down there, and you were immobile, and you were stagnant, and you were paralyzed, and you were blind, and you were incapacitated, you will act out your faith. You ask, you appropriate, you act. And those three words will drive miracle into your life. Number one, asking in prayer as a child asking in prayer as a child a child has just come into the world and he has not asked anything from the mother before and the mother ever said no and so she comes that little child comes with confidence and tonight as you ask forget about any failure in the past I prayed before forget about that I asked before, forget about that. I didn't get this before, forget about that. I was weak before, forget about that. Tonight is a new night. It's a new day. Asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence. Appropriating. Look at that. That is mine. Healing is mine tonight. Look at that. Strength is mine. Strength is mine tonight. Look at that. Provision is mine. Provision is mine tonight. Look at that. Miracle is mine. Miracle is mine tonight. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Appropriating the provision with confidence. Number three, acting like possessors and conquerors. Acting like possessors and conquerors. When you sing, because you sing after the message tonight, you will sing like I am a possessor. I am a conqueror. And when you walk, you walk with your shoulders up because tonight you are a possessor and a conqueror. And when, when you talk, you talk with confidence and assurance because tonight you are a possessor and a conqueror. I am a possessor. I said I'm a possessor and I am a conqueror. You have conquered already in Jesus' name. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Asking in prayer as a child. While the message is going on, you might remember what you need to ask. You write it down, judge it down. And then as we move on, there's something I didn't remember that before. Even though I've been waiting on the Lord from the morning, I remember now, jot that thing down. Everything you are asking tonight in prayer, the moment you open your mouth, the Lord will fill your mouth. In Matthew chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 7. It says, ask and it shall be given you. 
praise the Lord, there's no doubt. I praise the Lord, there's no unbelief. Praise the Lord, there is no uncertainty here. Ask, and it shall be given you. And it says, seek, and ye shall find. Seek, and ye shall find. You're finding it tonight. That thing you lost, you're finding tonight. And that child you lost, you're finding him tonight. And somebody that is running away from whom you've lost the person, you see the person tonight. It says, knock and it shall be opened unto you. The doors that were closed against you before, those doors are opened. My doors of opportunities are opened. I'll say it for yourself now. My doors of opportunities, they are open. And my doors of breakthrough, they are open tonight in Jesus' name. But say it, for everyone that asketh receiveth, somebody there on my right hand, everyone, somebody in front of me here, everyone, somebody over there, everyone, yes, at the gallery, over there, everyone, and yes, those who are on the internet, you are online, and you are listening now, I rejoice with you, everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, you will not seek in vain, you will not search in vain, and uh, to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, you have been outside the house and you are coming back. You might be a little child, you can knock. You might be a boy, a girl, you can knock. And you might be a mother, a father, you can knock. Or you are coming to that house for the first time. But the person inside there loves you and is expecting you. You can knock. Everybody here tonight can knock. And when you knock at the door tonight, the door is opened unto you. Hey, look at verse, look at verse 9. For what man is there of you? If his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? What you are asking tonight is what you are going to get. The miracle you are asking for tonight is what you are going to get. The blessing you are asking for tonight is what you are going to get. Look at verse 10. Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? It will not give you something poisonous. What you get tonight will be a blessing upon your life. Verse 11. Verse 11. If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. It says, if you are a parent, think about how you give good things to children. Anytime you hear that your child is in need, you rise up immediately. You don't want to see any of your children suffering, especially if you have that thing they need. And it says, God is going to do even much more for you. That if you are able to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give? Tell me, tell me good things to them that do what? Ask him. Thank God you are going to ask tonight and miracle in your life. Healing for the sick. Deliverance for the oppressed. Salvation for sinners. And blessings for everyone. Look at Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 19. From verse 18. 18, 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, anytime Jesus used those words, verily I say, it means this one is unchangeable. This one must be fulfilled. And he's telling you tonight, verily, verily. There's a verity in your life tonight. A certainty in your life tonight. All the, all the things, all the clouds are cleared away. Because tonight, the Lord is telling you, and he says, Verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on the earth, shall be bound in heaven. Why wouldn't you bind all those things disturbing your progress? Why will you not bind all those things infiltrating into your life? 
why will you not bind all those enemies that are determined that they're going to ruin your life and when you open your mouth tonight and you say enemy i bind you they are bound in heaven all the hindrances i stop you they are stopped in heaven in jesus name and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven what authority you have in your mouth tonight what power you have in your mouth tonight that everything you lose here on earth thank god heaven will support you heaven will back you up and heaven will bind and lose that thing in jesus name verse 19 again i say unto you that if two of you shall agree husband and wife if two of you shall agree brother and sister if two of you shall agree a friend with another friend if two of you shall agree the pastor and the member if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching as touching as touching anything there's no limit to asking tonight it is anything and thank god your prayers are answered if two of you shall agree as touching anything that he shall ask 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 it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven i am blessed tonight i am blessed tonight your doors are open tonight and your prayers are answered tonight and all the failures of the past they are cleared away tonight in jesus name matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 verse 19 and when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it and said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away any tree standing in your way not bearing any fruit any tree standing in your way having leaves only and yet it's not putting anything into your life anything good is sapping your energy is sapping your money is sapping all the nutrients and yet there's no fruit tonight as you open your mouth and say dry up it is dried up verse 20 and when the disciples saw it you will see it the marvel saying how soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say to this mountain, your time has come. If ye shall say to this mountain, it's talking about the mountain of problems, mountain of sickness, mountain of infirmity, mountain of challenges, mountain of impossibilities in your life. If ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. It shall be done. You have a miracle already. It shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. You see that? It's, it's waiting for you. Heaven is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. All you need to do is ask. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive i will receive i have received ephesians chapter 3 
Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able, unto him that is able, the God we're serving tonight, is he able? Yes. Able to save? Yes. Answer, able to save? Yes. Able to heal? Yes. Able to deliver? Yes. Able to cleanse the leper? Yes. Able to raise the dead? Yes. Ah, you're not sure? Yes. Is our God able? Yes. That challenge of your life tonight, you see, able to roll it away. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. Where is the power of God working tonight? I said, where is the power of God working tonight? And according to that power, he will go beyond your prayer. He will go beyond your expectation. Everything you are asking, he will do for you. And then he will do exceedingly above, abundantly above all that you ask or seek according to the power that works in you. If there's anything inside you there that is disturbing your life, the power will penetrate your life tonight and drive everything away in Jesus' name. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Yeah. Let me just quickly tell you why, why it says world without end. There are some people that say that miracles have stopped happening. No miracles again, no healings again, no deliverance again, no answer to pray again. But it says God is still able. And even to the end of the world and beyond the end of the world, you will continue to answer prayers. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence appropriating the provision with confidence here we need to really understand God is expecting that you know already that as you open your mouth and you ask that he has answered and then there are many people after they are preached they are sitting back some of them are still crying some of them are still mourning and the Lord is waiting for them it says, it's there, take it, it's there, it's yours, I pray you'll appropriate tonight. And let me give you the illustration here in Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 29, verse 29, it says, Luke chapter 15, verse 29, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid. Here is a child, here is a son, dutiful, here is a son, obedient, here is his son abiding in the house. Here is his son walking with the father, walking for the father. But he didn't know what he had and couldn't appropriate. He didn't take anything. He was living with complaint and with murmuring. He was living with sorrow. He said, I never transgress your commandment at any time and you never gave me a key that I might make merry with my friends. You never gave me. Look at verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. All that I have is thine. He, he had everything. He possessed everything. All the father had in the mind of the father. 
in the understanding of the Father. Everything belonged to him. But he was waiting. He never gave me a key. He never gave me anything. The Lord has given you everything. What you have to do is to stretch out your hand of faith and grab it and receive it. It is yours already. Mark chapter 7. Appropriating the provision with confidence. Mark chapter 7 verse 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. Let the children first be filled. The woman was asking for deliverance for her daughter, release for her daughter. And Jesus said, It's the children's bread. Many of the children of Israel did not even know that. The Pharisees did not know that. The Sadducees did not know that. They didn't appropriate. It was theirs. In the mind of Christ, every one of the children of Israel should take healing like breakfast. They should take healing like the provision of their parents. Because it's the children's bread. Look at this woman. She appropriated it. She said, I'm not going away from here empty-handed. Somebody there, I am not going away from here empty-handed. After all, I'm a child of God. Somebody there, I am a child of God. And I must appropriate what belongs to me. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 28. And she said, she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. He said, I'll take the crumbs. And when the crumbs are falling on the ground, I don't need permission from those who are sitting on the table to take the crumbs. I'll take the crumbs. And then he said unto her, For they say, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. For they say, You know your right. And you know that this is your provision. And that this belongs to you. And because you know that, and because you voice that out, go your way. The devil has no choice. He has to go out from your daughter. Your daughter is delivered tonight. Your son is delivered tonight. Your parents are delivered tonight. Appropriate. Take it. Because it is yours. It is mine. It is mine. First John chapter 3, verse 21. First John chapter 3, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. You didn't come by accident. You came the right way. And you came to the right place. And the blessing of the Lord is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Anybody having confidence in God there tonight? The Lord confirm it in your life. Verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever, we come with that confidence. We come with that trust. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Look at chapter 5, verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And this is the confidence 
that you have in him tonight that if we ask any sin according to his will tell me he has said your prayer he hears us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him i have the petitions i desired of him that's the end in your heart when you were coming and you said i'm going to that power night i'm going because of this reason the lord is going to affirm it and the lord is going to confirm it in your life in jesus name genesis chapter 21 genesis chapter 21 in this uh, chapter in this verse the verses i'm going to read now i want to show you that your answer is already there i didn't say your answer is on the way i said your answer is already there but you must stretch out your hand and appropriate it i will get it in uh, genesis chapter 21 verse 15 and the water was spent finished in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shops and she went and saw and sat her down over against him a good way as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lifted up her voice tell me and wept and wept and wept because look at my child there is no water the child is dying of thirst and so i turned my face away from that child crying verse 18 the lord talking to her now arise lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand for i will make him a great nation i will make you a great nation but look at verse 19 and god opened her eyes and god opened her eyes and god opened her eyes if your eyes are not open you'll be crying for nothing if your eyes are not open you'll be in despair despondency if your eyes are not open you'll be so discouraged you want to give up life if your eyes are not open you'll think this child will die your child will not die <laughs> verse 19 and god opened her eyes and she saw a well of water that well of water was so near that well of water was available and there was enough water inside that well to refresh the child and to keep the child alive and she saw a well of water and she went and what did she wait for somebody to come and tell her what to do with the water she appropriated it she saw it you see it tonight you see the healing tonight you see the deliverance tonight you see the power tonight and you see the provision tonight and you don't have to wait for anybody now you can appropriate it and stretch forth your hand you've got it tonight in jesus name and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad and god was with the lad and he grew and he dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer number one asking in prayer as a child 
Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence. Number three, acting like possessors and conquerors. Acting like possessors and conquerors. After you've asked and then you appropriate, your action will change. Your disposition will change. Your attitude will change. There will be no sorrow anymore once you appropriate. And there will be no confusion anymore once you appropriate. And there will be no depression anymore once you appropriate. There will be no crying anymore once you appropriate. Acting like possessors and conquerors. Your action shows you have appropriated. I appropriate tonight. I take it tonight. I said I take it tonight. It is yours tonight in Jesus' name. For Samuel chapter 1. For Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so and wept so because she was in need and because she was under a real pressure and a great demand and because she was not happy in her family she didn't have the fruit of the womb and so she wept so and then in verse 13 now Anna she spake in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I put out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Because of the problem, she had complaint. Because of the problem, she had sorrow. Because of the problem, she had grief. Verse 17, then Eli answered and said, go in peace. Anybody there? Go in peace. Go with your answer. Go with your miracle. Go with the supernatural power of God. Go in peace. The God of Israel grants thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Verse 18, verse 18, look at the action of a possessor, the action of a conqueror. She was crying before, she was in bitterness before, and she was in grief and sorrow before, but now Eli said, her prayers were answered. And I say, your prayers are answered. <laughs> Verse 18, And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So, the woman went her way. She stopped praying, because now the answer has come. And did eat. She wouldn't eat before, but now, this is action. This is the action of faith. I believe. I wasn't eating because I was sorrowful. I wasn't eating because I was in grief. I wasn't eating because I was discouraged. But now my prayers are answered. I said my prayers are answered. She did eat and her countenance was no more sad. That's the action of a possessor. The action of a possessor. Tonight, you are a possessor. So, your action will be your cheer up. 
your action will be you sing your action will be you are joyful your action will be you are happy it is done i said it is done in your life i said it is done and because of that there's no more sorrow because of that there's no more weeping because of that there's no more complaint it is done second kings i'm reading here from chapter four second kings chapter four second kings chapter four acting like a possessor acting like a conqueror in second kings chapter four verse 19 and he said unto his father my head my head and he said he, he said to a lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then tell me the gift God has given you will not die the provision the Lord has given you will not die. Yeah. And so she knew, she knew, this cannot be, this cannot be, this is my bundle of joy, my bundle of joy will not die. This has been my hope, my hope will not die. And this has been the great miracle, the miracle of a great long-awaited testimony. My miracle will not die. My testimony will not die. Look at verse, uh, verse 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the doors upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said send me i pray thee one of the young men and one of the asses that i may run to the man of god and come again was there a sorrow in her voice did the husband discover that something terrible terrific has happened did the husband say i about the child i sent to you what happened to him did the husband say that because the woman was talking with the voice of a possessor. My child is alive. Somebody there, my child is alive. Somebody there, my daughter is alive. Somebody there, my gift is alive. And then, verse 23. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, and she said, that's the possessor, a possessor. The possessor will act, will talk like a real possessor. It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her, her servant, drive and go for a slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came to the man of God. To Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold yonder the Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and ask and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thine husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered. And she answered. You must speak the language of a possessor. The child was still there. And nothing had happened to the child. The child appeared to be dead yet. But you know, your child cannot die. Your family cannot perish. And your provision will not die. So she said, it is well. 
Somebody there shout it out. It is well. Verse 36. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was coming unto him, he said, Take up thy child. Take up thy child. That situation of death was a temporary situation. Now, life has come. Resurrection life has come. Miracle life has come. That situation you brought here tonight, it was a temporary thing. Now, life has come to you. Miracle has come to you. Power has come to you. In my life, it is well any possessor there i said in your life it is well obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one i'm reading from verse 17 obadiah chapter one verse 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance that's where you are tonight and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess and the people of God shall possess their possession you have it tonight already Romans chapter 8 verse 37 Romans chapter 8 verse 37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us is our savior through him we're more than conquerors is our healer through him we're more than conquerors he is our deliverer through him we're more than conquerors possessors are they here tonight possessors are they there tonight conquerors are they there tonight stand up and put action to what you possess put action to what you conquer you're a conqueror tonight a possessor tonight let there be action of conquering action of possessing number one ask number two appropriate number three act act it out every blessing you're asking for tonight every miracle you're asking for tonight ask start by asking start by asking start by asking are you sick ask are you tormented ask are you poor ask are you jobless ask are you trodden down ask are you suffering ask whatever it is you need ask tonight ask tonight and ask as a child not expecting disappointment not expecting no not expecting failure you ask the heavenly father as a child are you sure it will be done you know it will be done your father your mother you give good things to your children how much more how much more shall a father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him ask mountains to move away ask yokes to be broken ask deliverance to be given unto you ask provision from heaven ask miracle ask whatever the need may be ask tonight is the night of asking and receiving asking as a child asking as a child no disappointment no refusal asking 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 and you ask as a child and remember that God is able, able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us ask him ask him tonight is the night of asking and receiving After asking, no more crying. After asking, no more complaining. After asking, no more sorrow. After asking, no more dejection. After asking, no more doubt. After asking, no more unbelief. Ask. This is your chance. Ask, this is your chance. It's yours. Whatsoever, 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 it's yours. Now appropriate, appropriate. You remember Hagar? She was crying, and the Lord opened her eyes. And the well of water was there. And your miracle, like an inexhaustible well, is there. Appropriate. Go there. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. It's yours. Appropriate. Appropriate. You see that woman? It's not try to give the children's bread to dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Even the dogs will take the crumbs under the table. It's not even asking for permission to take that. Already it's crumbs under the table. Appropriate. All that I have is yours. Appropriate. Is me yours all the time. Healing, yours all the time. Deliverance, yours all the time. Miracle, yours all the time. Anointing that breaks the yoke, yours all the time. Ask, appropriate. Now act it out. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Act it out. Move like a new person. Talk like a possessor. Stand like a conqueror. No, it is done. Act like a possessor. Act like a conqueror. It's done. It's done. It's done. No more complaints. It's done. No more sorrow, it's done. No more starving yourself. I cannot eat, I cannot eat because of the grief and the sorrow. It's done, Chero. You've got it, you've got it, you've got it. Rejoice like a conqueror. You've got it. Smile like a possessor. You've got it. Testify like a possessor, like a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. I have received. I am a possessor. I am a conqueror. I will talk like a conqueror. I will act like a conqueror. I will smile like a conqueror. I will sing like a conqueror. 
I got it. I got it. I got it. Where is she? What is he there? You got to eat in Jesus' name. Ask, appropriate, act. Your mountains are gone. Keep up those signs. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight for the assurance you have given us. That every prayer has been answered in Jesus' name. Wipe the tears of your people away. Take their sorrow away. Take their griefs away. And every oppression of the devil, I command, come out in Jesus' name. And all the mountain of problems that they have presented before you, and they have asked you to remove, Lord, a confirmation in every, every life tonight in Jesus' name. Mountains, get out in Jesus' name. Attacks, affliction, get out in Jesus' name. Impossibilities, be possible in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every miracle that is needed now. From all the people asking you, whatever the miracle may be, do it for every one of them in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. If you're lame, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Hunch back, vanish away in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for those who need miracle children. Lord, grant them their petition. Grant them their answer. Miracle children in Jesus' name. You are concerned for a boy, concerned for a girl, concerned for a son, concerned for a daughter. Lord, I pray you answer their prayers. All those concerns, fulfill them in Jesus' name. You lost somebody. You've been looking for them. Wherever they are now, Spirit of the living God, search them out. Bring them back. And let there be reunion to their families in Jesus' name. You have been waiting for the will of God in marriage. Lord, I pray you open doors for them right now. They have asked. They have sought. They have not. Open the door for everyone in Jesus' name. Provision, abundance for the jobless. Provide for everyone. Lord, I pray there is a verity, a certainty, and assurance in every life tonight. Every prayer has been answered. Every yoke has been broken. Put smile upon every face. Laughter in every mouth. Miracle for everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 